Welcome to the Stephen Shields Radio Show. Today I've got Christian De La Cortina uh, from the movie Generation Wolf. How are you, Christian? Very good, thank you. I'm fine. Christian, I watch. You? I'm very good. Christian, I watched the movie uh, Generation Wolf on Amazon Prime, and all, all of a sudden, I just came across it, checked it out. I thought it was fantastic what you were doing in it, and uh, your acting. Uh, how'd you How'd you get the role for that? Actually, I'm a filmmaker as well, and I wrote the film, and I gave myself the the the, the main part. That's what I did. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, quite talented, and um, you in the movie you're like a you're like an entrepreneur. You were selling these huge cars, and then at the end you start selling marijuana. I was like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" But it's quite interesting. And then you have you, you pitch into investors as well, and then they decline. Wow. Yeah, well, it, it looks a bit like uh, when you're a filmmaker, you're also pitching a lot and trying to you got to hustle your way in making movies. And it's not too different from being an entrepreneur. Mm. So uh, the, the good thing about this movie at Generation Wolf is it, it's actually an entrepreneur thriller. Mm. And it's it's different. And we haven't seen too much of these movies. So uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with the results. And I'm happy to know that my movie is now in Australia. Mm. No, it's a great movie, Christian. And uh, how, how much um, time and effort was put into it? A lot, my friend, because mm. when you don't have too much, a lot of money, you have to compensate with a lot of love and time. And that's what we did. We got a lot of things for free sponsors. We flew to California because mm-hmm. we shot this in Canada and near Montreal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what we did is we went to uh, California. I got the James Dean's car. That's a beautiful Porsche Spider mm-hmm. 550. I got it for free. I mean, I had a lot of sponsors for that movie. And otherwise this movie would have cost me a couple of millions Wow. And I made it for I made it for under a million dollars. Did you have to fund this uh, out of your pocket, or was it all sponsored? To uh, I had it? I had private investors, but also wow. from my own money as well. That's a, that's yeah. courage. That's yeah, well, you have to believe in what you do, and one movie leads to another, and that's how it is, you know. Because mm. I know a few Australian actors. Uh, well, there's one from the movie Convict who it was independent film, self-funded as well. But yeah, it's it's not easy unless you've got a production company that's doing it for you. I know it, it's a tough business, but you know, like you're also a musician. You have mm. to be passionate about what you do, and you have a lot of you're gonna have a lot of no's in in, in your path in your journey, and you got to mm. keep fighting and keep pushing. And sometimes it also means taking risk on your own because, you know, it's easy to ask others to risk their money. But if you are risking also some of your money, it shows some respect too, you know? Mm -hmm. So. No, good on you. Hats off to you, Christian. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, after Generation Wolf, what's life been like for you? (laughs) Well, I'm an actor in here and I have uh, good roles on TV shows, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, uh, we have developed three movies uh, in a couple of months, we'll be doing another movie called mm-hmm. Undocumented, which is about a migrant worker uh, stuck in a dairy farm in Vermont. Mm-hmm. Uh, same kind of rural locations, countryside. And we have an amazing movie that we we're trying to fund now. It's actually, um, it, we're going to be shooting in, in Chile. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's about Canadian mining corporation destroying the environment in South America. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're working hard to finance this and I'm also auditioning for other things. So mm-hmm. we're trying to keep busy, you know? That's so cool, Christian. That's Thank really you. cool. Have you worked in, um, with, uh, in, the, in the huge blockbusters in Hollywood? Big, any big films? Uh, yeah, I worked on Brooklyn, which yep. uh, won um, an Oscar. I uh, played a, <laughs> the role of the brother of the protagonist. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was a good experience. They shot... It was a co-production with Ireland, Canada, and United States. And um, yeah, it, and then also I had a big role in the French TV show and the French movie called Les Suches. Mm-hmm. And they came from France to Canada. And that movie went so well that later on they had to cast me again for the, um, it, it was a trilogy, uh, a sequel. So they mm-hmm. got me and they flew me back to France and it was a really nice experience. Really That's good. so cool. You know, as a musician too, I, I dream to be, uh, to be able to score a big movie one day. I look up to Hans Zimmer and, you know. Oh, 
Man, I, I want to I wanna listen to your material because I yep. always need good mu music composer for my movies. <laughs> I'll send you an email after the show of my stuff too as well. With pleasure. With pleasure. It's all instrumental. But um, I studied film music in my undergraduate degree as well. I played clarinet. I'm classically trained as well. So, so you do shows as well? You participate in shows? and was, part uh, was participating in shows uh not paid that uh, during my degree i played in the hansel and gretel opera and Very i played good. in i started in a community orchestra as well so that was fun wow Very good. Fun. and where where are you located exactly uh sydney australia oh nice <laughs> i really want to go visit you guys mm. it's a Who beautiful knows? place yeah you but actually up, uh, <laughs> what? you might end up filming out in sydney one day you never know i hope I hope you have a, you, you have a very good weather also in, in Australia. Mm. You know, it's funny because my parents, 40 years ago, they moved from Chile to Canada and it, it came that close that they went to Australia instead. Mm. And um, finally they went to Canada, but sometimes I wish they went to Australia because mm. it's damn cold up here in, in Canada, mm -hmm. really cold weather. What part of Canada are you from, Christian? The East, so... Uh, Montreal, near Montreal. Yep. Six hours, six hours away from New York. Wow. So, yeah. It's cold. Yeah. It gets very cold there. It is. It is. <laughs> it's a beautiful country. We, we're very similar. We're like cousins, Australia mm. and Canada. Very similar. We're yeah. prime ministers and. The How's system. um the pandemic? How did the pandemic treat you last year as well with your uh, work? Uh, actually, I was lucky because I have a recurrent role in a TV series and I kept acting wow. and uh, we got investors for our movies and I also we do commercials mm -hmm. uh, and it went well, very well. So I'm, I'm happy. And I felt that the pandemic, in a sense, was a blessing for me because, you know, you always feel in the business that there's competition and Hollywood is doing this. And then you're like, oh, I got to keep moving. And there's always kind of a race but everybody stopped producing. So I felt that I was moving ahead. I was writing, developing, and, and I never stopped. So it puts me in a better position now that uh, you know I have two, three scripts ready to go. So mm -hmm. it helps. And we had good time to you know, spend with family. And, but it's not easy being at home so much, you know? So. Mm. <laughs> and what, you know, I'm the same as a musician. I published my first time I published my work last year. So that, that took a lot of courage as well. Well, so, congratulations. I was very scared. You have all to my do respect. It. And what you do, you, how'd you release your, your music? I put it on Spotify, SoundCloud, the royalty free libraries, Bandcamp. I've started going down that, that road as well. As well. And you sing as well? No, I don't sing. I, I did do a bit of choir in the university but i'm not a professional singer but um yeah I not, did yet. A, not, not yet not yet <laughs> never know but exactly. um yeah entrepreneurship is very scary in the beginning as well i've just well, started you, you, you have no choice I, I think as an artist and i i see i i have a lot of friends that are actors mm. and many actors they they just wait for roles Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, there's nothing. And you have to be entrepreneur. You have to write your own stuff. If you're a musician, you have to write, compose, you know. So you have to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Actually, my, my, my degree wasn't in acting. It was actually business. Mm -hmm. So it really helped. And, mm -hmm. and I realized today that you need business for everything, mm. especially as an artist. So congratulations on, on you being able and, you know, moving forward with your music and dream. It's very important. It's look, the easiest part is, and I'm sure you'll find this is creating the work. That's the easy part. But then when it comes to the business and the want to make money, that's, that's tough. It's tough <laughs> it's for tough everyone. Business. It is. And also the movie business is tough because it's easy to write a script. It's not mm -hmm. easy, but it's a lot of work, but you can always spend some time in your house and do it, but actually producing, you need a lot of money mm. and it's really complicated. So it's not easy, but you got to keep fighting, you know. Mm. And and I felt that when I played my role as Vincent del Toro, I wasn't too far from reality because the prior months to the production, 
I was really hustling, man. I was trying to get money and it was tough and nobody would listen. And I was just missing a little amount of money and I couldn't get it. And, you know, at some point I was even like, Jesus, <laughs> let's do marijuana and finance this, you know? <laughs> but no, we did the movie and it went well, but it wasn't, it wasn't easy at all. Was this movie a big Hollywood blockbuster or was it just a small independent film? No, it was an independent film. Mm -hmm. uh, but it went really well because, uh, uh, you know, the movie got uh, purchased by uh, the studio um, um, Goldwyn. Mm -hmm. uh, what's this? Yeah, it's Goldwyn. Goldwyn Studio. I, I Samuel Goldwyn. I'm so sorry. Samuel Goldwyn Studios. And they, they put into uh, Amazon Prime worldwide. Mm -hmm. So for a little independent movie that had no grant, it's, it's, a, it's a big achievement for us. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Yeah. No, I loved and, it. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to know that uh, an Australian guy watched it. It's mm -hmm. good. I like the independent uh, films better, Christian. I think there's a bit more talent involved in it. You know, I like the independence. Better. Well, you have the directors, they have more freedom. Mm. And, um, you know, a year ago, we produced another movie. Uh, it was a comedy and we were actually paid. It's, it's two guys that financed the whole thing. But you know, as they were financing, they would control everything. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the studio. If they finance the whole thing, they're going to control the whole thing as well. So when you are doing independent stuff, you still have more control over your, your, your piece of art. And, and it shows more what you are, what you are when the, the final mm -hmm. product, you know? Mm. Yeah, I know. And that's tough too, because there's directors that want things done a certain way as well. You know, when there's a lot of money on the line. Yeah. Well, you know, as a director, I'm very comfortable. My passion is, is actually writing and, and acting. That's my most, my biggest passion is, is actually acting. But um, I realized that there's not too many directors that can do what I do, mm -hmm. uh, which is being a guerrilla style and, and being able to get stuff for free. And, and I'm really good at this. I'm getting sponsors and, and, but it's not easy when you try to get directors that they're very comfortable and they expect to be treated like, a, you know, a big name director, a Steven Spielberg, but they have no experience. So it's tough a bit to, you, you, you're not going to just give away your movie to a, a random director that wants to do it, and, and the, but the, they need to put more effort into it. So that's what I, I found difficult to find directors that are willing to do the extra mile to make a movie mm. so i'd rather do them myself <laughs> you know wow what's the difference between you your your independent film versus say a dwayne johnson because dwayne johnson he's a big collie he's he's huge so what's the difference oh, yeah. between you and dwayne <laughs> there's a huge <laughs> one well i know he's a I, I heard he's a really nice guy mm -hmm. uh but this guy he has a, so much power that he surrounds himself with the best and he has so much money that these big productions did. There's, there's nothing, nothing can stop them, you know, mm. but as an independent, I really want to do stuff that are more human than Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I want to also, uh, there's more openness to diversity now. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a Hispanic, I'm a Latino living in the, in North America, there's a voice now, there's more movement to, you know, accept these, these movies with Latinos, mm -hmm. you know, we represent 25% of the box office in the States and there's only a few, not, not even 2% of roles that are made for Latinos. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I like to make my own movies. And unlike other movies that they always cast you as the bad guy and the drug dealer, you mm -hmm. can also make your own type of characters that are more developed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. That's thank you. You know, and you look at, um, you got John Cena now who's, who's become very big with the latest Transformers movie as well. Yeah. He was a wrestler. Dave Batista, they're all making it. Do you think one day you'll be up there with them? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not a wrestler, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Do you think, do you think you'll be competing with that, uh, with those guys one day in the movie no, business? Well, uh... Actually, the, the people that really inspire me in the movie business is people like Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. Matt Damon, uh, Ben Affleck, Ed Burns, 
Also, um, Brit Marlin, they, they mm -hmm. write their own material. And that's what I really, I'm really looking for. Mm -hmm. I, I'm open to act like these big guys in big Hollywood movies. But my goal is to make movies that are engaging, that I also that are entertaining, but also denounce certain issues, environmental, mm. uh, social issues. And so I want to make my own movies and make it in Hollywood through my movies. I, I don't want to, I could have moved to California a couple of years ago, but then going there to just stick in a line and audition and kiss some ass, it's not what I want to do. Mm. No. Yeah, it's a sad yeah. thing what's going on too. Um, I think sometimes it doesn't become about the talent in hollywood i think it's becoming about a, a model or a popularity contest there oh what yeah definitely and when we casted we, we we did some casting in california for some of our movies and every time we, we deal with american agents it's it's a different game it's a different game it's all about money um we have a big movie now that we want to do uh atacama files it's a movie that i told you about the mine industry the showing mm -hmm. the environment and we approach a couple of names and normally they don't even want to talk to you because mm. to their eyes, you're still not there. They just want to see you. They, 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 they really want to see you once the, the, the apple tree is grown up giving, given apples, they don't mm. want to invest in you at all. But let's say we had, um, uh, the actor was amazing with us was, um, uh, Viggo Morganson. He read the script, he liked it, but he was too busy doing two other movies. So he said, I can't do it, but I like your, your project. You got to do it. It's important. But he was such a gentleman. Mm. And I wish more actors would follow his, his example, you know, lead, because he's really a, he's an amazing guy. He even sent me a personal email thanking me for, for sending the script to him. I mean, it costs you nothing to be a gentleman, you know? Mm -hmm. So this guy I respect a lot, but there's all... There's, a, there's so many games in the movie industry that you absolutely need to make it so you gain respect from, from your peers mm. in, the, in the biggest, in the big picture. Mm. But I, I surround myself with people that believe in me and, and investors that they keep putting money in my movies and one day it's going to pay, hopefully. Have you been a full-time actor your whole life, Christian, or have you had to go, go, go to work to be an employee? No, actually, I've been lucky enough to be my own boss. Cool. Uh, but I did that by also doing other stuff on the side, which is uh, planting marijuana. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> There's a serious business for that. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, I did this. <laughs> I did this by doing commercials and corporate videos for companies, and and slowly and slowly, I, it always kept coming back these clients and. I was auditioning and I was also developing my movies, but I always make commercials and, and corporate videos for companies. So that, that's good. That pays the house, you know? Man, <laughs> you're lucky because a lot of actors wish they were doing that in Australia because, you know, a lot of them have to have a, have a job, you know, bartending as well because they're yeah, but the, the, Yes, but my, my advice to actors is learn editing. Mm. Learn like Premiere Pro, get in there and learn. And I edit my stuff. I even edit my own movies. Mm. Uh, so you, you put yourself in the position that you can be more independent and you can also bring something to the table. Uh, buy yourself a little camera, start shooting stuff. And then maybe your uncle needs a little video for a little video for his company. And then you start. That's how I started. Mm. Like uh, I knew a guy who was, uh, we became a good friend and one of my investors. Um, a filmmaker like defrauded him. He took the money and run and never did the commercial. And I was doing my first short movie with him. And then he say, why don't you do my commercial? And I did it. And then that opened the door to keep working with other people. And when you're honest and always work the best you can, people will always come back to you. Mm. And that's my advice to actors. Just don't wait for auditions, man. You're going to wait a lot write your stuff, uh, meet other writers and develop stuff and learn other skills in the movie business because a lot of actors, they become bartenders and it's fine and other jobs, but you might as well learn other jobs in the movie business. So you always keep swirling around the same people, you know, mm -hmm. the same industry. Yeah, it's the same for music too. A lot of musicians here are, are working a, a full-time job as well. 
or part time and they do the gigs on the weekend in Australia. Well, you teaching. start like that. You start mm-hmm. like that, but then you start making, let's say, one soundtrack for a movie, and then you make a second one, and then how that's how you keep you grow, you know. Mm-hmm. And what you're doing now, you have your own radio channel. It's, it's quite amazing. Congratulations. It's fun. Yeah, the podcast is fun because I talk to a lot of people from different industries too. Talk a lot of things on the show. I love it. Very nice. Very. Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm going to start following it, man. I'm going to start listening to your uh, your podcast. It's mm-hmm. good. You know. And it's uh, fun. how was your uh, your talk with uh, Tyler? It was fun. We we talked a lot about Generation Wolf. You know, and Tyler. You know, he's honest. Oh yeah, he's a great guy. And you know, this guy, I audition. I think the whole country, I auditioned Canada and in the States to get the right bill. Mm. And when I auditioned this guy, we knew he was the one. And it was his first feature film. Mm. It's amazing. He's a theater guy. And he was also very funny. And, and he, in between takes, he, was always, he would always make me laugh. So at some point, he was so good at imitating Christopher Walking's that the spa scene, it was like, you know what? Mm. Do the Christopher Walking thing. It's mm. like, you're sure? I said, yeah, do it. And it's one of the funniest moments in the movie. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I like that scene where you, where you're in the spa with the women and you're you're asking for the money all the time. And <laughs> yeah. he's just so relaxed, dude. <laughs> yeah, we crazy. had a lot of fun. That was good. Good movie. Yeah. And That's also cool. the other actors that, that was amazing. They were all amazing, but the father was so good, man. And I I, I was able to find this actor through a, an agent in California and since he's from Chile, I, I just paid the casting director to get the phone number. I said, you know what? I'll, I'll deal with him. That's it. Mm. And I called him over and he was so nice. And there's an instant connection because he's from the same country, but I was in Canada. And I said, look, I want you to be my movie. And who are you? I said, look, I'm a Chilean, but living, you know, my parents are Chilean. I'm, I'm Canadian, but I want to make this movie. And I knew the father. And we flew him in. Mm. And, you know, I'm honest. I, it was tough getting the visa. I invited him. He came. He was such a good actor, man. We became friends. And, uh, you know, when you work with passionate people, it always go well. It goes well, you know? Yeah. You know, uh, between Canada and the States, do you guys have to have a visa to fly? Not to fly, but to work, yes. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's a different game. Yeah. You as well. If, if you wanted to work in the States, you need a visa. Yeah, even to travel holiday, you have to have it as well. Even going to oh, Canada, yeah? yeah. But you yeah, guys from Australia? Yeah, it's always been like that, Christian. You need visa to come here? Yeah, Esther visa. That's weird. I didn't know that. Mm. So, do I need a visa to go see you? I don't know. You have to ask. <laughs> you have that's, to ask. That's weird. Orders. Okay. Actually, right now, if you think about it. Mm. I'm talking to the future and you're talking to the past because mm. we're 14 hours. Uh, we have a difference of 14 hours. Mm. <laughs> you're in the future, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here it's Friday night. Mm-hmm. You're Saturday morning. Mm. So it's a window to the past and to the future right here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if I got to travel to Canada, I'm going back in time a day. Behind. Exactly. So you don't need a DeLorean. <laughs> It's just the <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> oh god no but that's just what it is that's traveling christian every country's got different laws too yeah you know but you have a beautiful country very mm. beautiful and you have oh. good movies as well oh yeah we have uh hugh jackman he, he's a he's a famous actor as well yeah. yeah he works a lot in montreal actually for uh he was working a lot for the, the big movies uh what is it called x-men mm. they all shot in montreal good stuff you know yeah australia's got some very fantastic places to shoot movies christian yeah that's yeah. quite amazing in the um, middle of a desert it's like there's the middle of nowhere there was a movie called uh, wolf creek that was filmed there it's a, it's like a horror film but some of the uh, landscape... what's the other great movie you have uh, called rabbit um about the indigenous uh, you shot in the desert in australia very good movie very good and, but yeah so what about your music you're you're working on some new material now what, what are you doing yeah so well i score like little uh trailers on my youtube channel 
for, yeah. for free to build the portfolio up. I've got the work on Spotify as well. Just released a single and an album too. And uh, just trying new stuff out as a, as a composer. Very good. Well, yeah. I'll look uh, at your material for sure. Mm -hmm. Just experimenting it as well. And uh, have you heard of uh, Star Now as well? Building up that portfolio for music. Uh, excuse me? A star now. It's like where musicians and actors can look for work as well. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I don't know that. I'll send you that. You can build your portfolio up as well. Great. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. There's another one very good I use sometimes. It's called Upwork. Yep. Upwork, uh, look, as a musician, uh, I suppose that they're looking for composers and stuff. You should put your name there. Yeah, I will look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. And very, very professional people. So it's good. Mm -hmm. It's, um, no, it's, it's fun. You just got to build the experience, I guess. It's, yeah. it's getting the, say, look, I'm in the process of looking for an agent, uh, Christian. They're very, very hard to get in Australia. Well, I think, I think that you're very, uh, entrepreneur by like calling people and stuff the way you have, uh, you have a lot of passion. I'm pretty sure that you can get even contracts on your own for now. Mm -hmm. Have you had but, to work with an agent yourself? Yeah, I do have an agent as an actor. Yep. Uh, in, I, I have an agent in the English part of Canada and the States. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Quebec, in the French part, I, I represent myself because a lot of cast and director know me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, it's best because you see what's going on and there's not many things going on. Mm -hmm. But you still you know, you, you control, you know, what's, what's going on. Sometimes agents, they filter stuff. And you, yeah. when you have, let's say TV series, so, you know, I had the problem that my aide, my former agent was getting maybe too comfortable and I was sending checks every week, but you also need as a, as an agent to behave like a manager to, you know, mm -hmm. shake hands and, and do business. And so sometimes it's, it's tough to write, to find the right fit, but mm. You'll find someone, that's for sure. Yeah, look, I can understand from the business point of view, they need to make money as well. And if they don't see value in their in your work, because they're very picky in, in Australia. No, well, no, and everywhere they are. People, like I said, they want you, once, once there's money to make, to, mm. to, to be made. They, they don't want to invest. And so I think what you have to do is surround yourself with people that believe in you, mm -hmm. that will help you out give you a little gig here and there, and then that's how you grow. Mm. And that, that's a bit, that's a tough business of, again, people see you as a number mm -hmm. and it's a difficult thing, you know? And, and also today there's the cancellation campaigns that all of a sudden you're nobody or all of a sudden you're somebody. And it's so like weird. Mm. It's a, uh, it's a weird, weird business. But it's a it's a beautiful one mm. <laughs> in music and movies and yeah. Because there are musicians that have been exploited by agents and ripped off by managers too, as well in the music. Oh world. yeah, look, even with my movies. Wow. I got I got ripped off with distributors big time. My my first movie made a lot of money, but the distributor kept it all and just gave me five hundred bucks. I mean, it's ridiculous. And that's how it is. And you go to California and there's so many filmmakers trying to sell the content and mm. it's a jungle, you know, mm. but you learn from every mistake you learn. You have to take it in a positive way. Mm. So this deal with Generation Wolf was a better deal than the, the, than the previous one. And the next one will be even better. And that's how you grow. Mm. It's yeah. a stepping stone. It's a learning thing. But um, other than that, you, you did a business degree, did you? I did. Yep. And, and it helped me. My parents didn't want me to be in the movie business. They said, study something. Mm -hmm. And I went into commerce. I didn't like it. But then afterwards I said, look, now I finished, I'm, I'm going to be an actor and make movies. And as I was tr struggling to become an actor, that's when I heard about Goodwill Hunting mm -hmm. and Matt Damon and Ben Affleck writing their own script. And that's right there. I knew right then I knew that I had to write my own material. Mm -hmm. and that's when I started writing my stuff. And at first my script were like really bad, <laughs> but, but you learn. And then now I surround myself with consultants and script doctors. And, and now I, I write good scripts and 
And I also got a lot of parts because I would ad- audition without being desperate. I didn't care. Mm. And I got the roles. So that's how you got to do it. That's cool that you got a business degree. And did you, did it teach you how to run a business and do all totally. the marketing? Wow. Totally. Yeah. And, and my wife now became a producer. So that helps me a lot. Mm. You know, your team, you know, and you need to trust your, your teammates. That's so yeah. cool, Christian. But and listen, if, if, uh, if I know people that are looking for composers, I'll, I'll give you mm-hmm. a shout or I'll introduce you to them. That'll sure. be good. Christian, I, yeah. thank you yeah. for coming on today's show. Where can people find you on your social media? Social website. media and also there's my, my website, christiandelacortina.com. And from there, you can find everything on me, I think. Awesome. <laughs> and thank you for inviting me. I appreciate your, your, your call, your show. And I wish you also the best of luck with your music. Thanks, Christian. Always great to have you on. All right. Thanks so much.